Hey, you want to see my raw, naked meat? Why are you looking at me like that? I'm seriously asking if you want to know all about the food system in Wild Hearts because it's incredibly important, yet at the same time incredibly deep and complex and takes a bit of understanding. <laughs> what? <laughs> what else would I have possibly meant? Oh yes, my fellow hunters, welcome then to the complete Wild Hearts food guide and your key to unlocking this system's hidden power and potential. Thank you to EA for sponsoring this deep dive into the grub, and indeed thank you to EA for making me very hungry in the process. Because seriously, you do not want to ignore this it can be the difference between succeeding the more difficult hunts or not in a big way. Food in Wild Hearts is way more impactful and important than it is in Monster Hunter, and you need to start building good farming and eating habits, which is a sentence I never expected to say, but here it is, if you want to be a successful hunter. So, let's start our journey towards unlocking this whole thing for you guys, giving you some easy to mass obtain potent food options that universally work for every weapon and every hunt, so you can start getting some good amounts of extra strength. Firstly then, acquiring ingredients. Obviously, when you open up the menu, you will see, well, everything you have acquired. It all gives various different skills, and you can eat it then and there, raw, unprocessed, and gain those skills. You can eat any amount or combination until your food bar is full, and then you are done until you succeed a hunt. Yes, you will not waste food if you fail a hunt, you will still have it for the next attempt. So that's very nice, you don't have to worry about wasting food. You can use the good stuff and keep trying until you succeed at the current kimono. So budgeting this food allowance to get the maximum amount of skills for space is the goal here. So, back to said acquiring ingredients. Obviously, as you're running around the map, you want to become a human vacuum cleaner and just give me all of the things as you pick up random bits of wheat and veg and fruit and just grab it all because you want a really good stock of stuff. You can also sneak up on or just run up and stab the various small kimono and a lot of them will give you various types of meat, but meat is meat and we'll get to that. The in-game encyclopedia will tell you which small kimono actually do give meat. And then the creatures that you capture and then put in karakuri pens will reward you periodically with ingredient items and seasoning depending on which one you choose to put in there and again you can see what they'll give you on the in-game encyclopedia. And then finally using the fish paddle karakuri which you can unlock fairly early and placing it in a river you can start to farm fish. And therein are the three main types of food. Vegetables, fish, and meat. In the most general sense speaking, vegetables are defensive skills, meat are offensive skills, and fish are stamina or utility skills. That's kind of the core here, and it's worth keeping in mind. But of course, you don't just want to be running around grabbing random stuff. You want to make this a little bit more efficient, and of course for that, Karakuri comes in. You have these little Tsukumo shrines, which will slowly gather up ingredients for you, and you can go collect them when they're ready. If you put one in Minato, you will just get eggplant from it, which is a nice stock to have, but if you put one on the map, it will reflect that map's resource pool, like this one I have got here, which gives me some rice which is very nice as it's quite a potent ingredient so basically get in the habit of placing one of these on each map and regularly checking it so now we have our ingredients and lots of ways to get hold of them. What do we actually do? Well, there is four things we can do with them. We can dry them using the drying rack, we uh, can ferment them with the fermenter, pickle them with the pickler, and smoke them with the smoker. All of these are unlocked via the karakuri tree once you reach it and have enough orbs, and there is lots of upgrades for them as well, so they do what they do faster and more efficiently, but their basic function will remain 
remain the same. So let's break down each of the four using the eggplant, as that's the standard one you'll have a lot of from Minato, as the example. Drying rack essentially takes the ingredient and enhances it. It just makes it better bang for your buck. It doesn't fundamentally change it, and you can then use dried ingredients in all of the other instruments. Fermenting then will convert an ingredient, either raw or dried, into a seasoning. Seasonings can be infused into food using the pickler to add or enhance the effects that it will give. So say I have food that gives health and defense, I have some seasoning that gives stamina reduction, I pickle them together and now I have health, defense and stamina reduction. As a simple example, it does get a little bit more complicated and some food changes in more drastic ways, but essentially look at the pickler as a combiner of the products from the drying rack and the fermenter. Finally then, we have the smoker, which is like super drying rack, ergo it will just majorly enhance, but not necessarily change the properties of the food that you put in. So an easy process to follow here then for ultimate prime peak food is get the ingredient that gives you your preferred uh, skills and stats, dry it out. Then acquire the seasoning that gives you your preferred skills and or stats, either from pets gathering or fermenting your chosen ingredient. Then combine in the pickler the seasoning and the dried food that again both give you your chosen and ideal stats. And then finally take that pickled dried product and smoke it for the ultimate and massively potent consumable uh, that will give you everything you could possibly want in the most amounts that it will give you. I hope that kind of makes sense. Get ingredient, dry it, pickle it, smoke it is your general flow, and that takes time. It takes a lot of time. You have to just wait for these processes to happen, and it's not a case where doing a hunt will just move it on and then you're done. It's pure time. The time you spend on a hunt will reduce it, but not by any longer than just standing in front of it waiting. So you do want to have a lot of these stations set up, and that way you can start cycling food a lot faster. So, for example, one of the stations I have on the river on the first map is a fish station. Various paddle scoops, various drying racks and smokers, and so on and so forth, because fish generally are stamina-related, and as Nodachi main, well, I want stamina management skills, as that's quite core to the weapon, so I've got this kind of going on here, and that's really nice to check back in. That said, then, I want to take a bit of time to talk about pets. The creatures that you can pick up throughout the map, and then display and farm, in the Karakuri cages once you unlock them down the tree. These guys give seasoning, they give ingredients, depending on which one, and that's all well and good. You can experiment, see what's what, what ones give the ideal stats for you. But, as a quick recommendation, if you want to essentially ignore this entire food system and just have good enough food that's reliable, potent, gives you a big old health bar and a useful skill for every weapon, well, let me introduce you to Mr. Fox here. Pleasure to meet you. He will give you the Inari fruit. And you can eat two of these on a full bar before you reach 80 out of 100 and can't have no more. Fill in the final 20 with whatever you feel like. But from that 80, you will get plus 24 maximum health, which is a good decent chunk, and 10% chance to not actually consume Karakuri thread when you build a Karakuri, which is obviously really, really good and can really fuel your hunts if you get a few lucky procs of this skill. This way, you can just have two fox pens set up, they will regularly give you the fruit between hunts, and then you can just keep grabbing them and eating them and just repeat and still have a fairly potent power boost from your ingredients, your food, without going through all the various processes. Obviously, you can do much better, you can min-max, you can get much stronger, but this is a nice, easy way to actually have a reliable, good, worthy one to eat without going crazy. 
But if you're anything like me, you probably do want to go crazy, so I will show you an example of what I would do for the ideal Nodachi food from experimenting. And sadly, you do kind of need to experiment. There's not nothing in game that will tell you every single ingredient, what it gives, what combinations it gives from using it in various different processes with various different other ingredients. It really wants you to kind of figure these things out, try random stuff in random places, keep an eye and a note of what worked well, and then just kind of focus on that, which is fun in its own way, but I do wish once you'd made everything once, you could just look it up somewhere and have that information available, so hopefully that does change. In any case... For me, I'm more than happy to go on a meat hunting run, killing a few small kimono around the maps in order to get meat. Then simply drying that meat, taking the result and smoking it, results in a very potent health up and pure attack up mix that really does get the job done. I could go a little bit further, involve the fermenting, the seasoning, the pickling, but really it's not necessary for anything other than min-max speedrunning, at least with the current difficulty levels of the endgame kimono and systems, so that kind of works for me. This really is something that's set up to give you as much out as you put in, and you can really go for it if you want to, but there is a happy medium, which I hope you will find, or at least understand a little bit more, thanks to this guide. You can also get vermilion versions of each of the food processors, which work the same, except they look red and they cost a different element of your dragon pit resources, so you can have more of them and spread out the cost, so that's very useful too. Past that then, there's not much else to say. You have this general loop of get ingredients which can be done via gathering yourself, via various karakuri, or via pet farming. You then take those ingredients and you dry them. You can then pickle them with seasoning you've created from fermenting them, and then smoke the final result, and job is a good un. And then keeping on top of that, keeping food camps, food stations on various maps with the shrines to power it all up, is something that's very much useful and highly recommended that you do. Other than that, I wish you good luck, and I hope this has certainly helped in at least digging down into what can feel like quite an overwhelming amount of options when it comes to the food in this game. If you want to upgrade how many ingredients you can literally hold and the variety that's on offer, well, you can do so once you unlock the Carpenters in Minato, and you can pay gold to do just that, takes a bit of time to complete, and then jobs are good in. You can also buy food if you really don't want to do any of this and have a surplus of gold from the shop and the food here is actually quite potent and you'll get some really good offerings that might be worth grabbing just to keep hold of if you ever get a particularly hard hunt. There's not much else to say then when it comes to this system, and I'm sure we will do a follow-up video having identified the perfect food for each weapon and how to most efficiently and easily get it, so look forward to that. For now, like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good bye. <laughs> Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye